Hello everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street. Hope you enjoy this message and if you have any feedback you'd like to offer feel free to give me a call at 207-364-3856 or my cell phone 207-357-4748. Again, enjoy today's message. Thanks. And is quick to respond. 
It also allowed God's word to shape thoughts and attitudes. Have you ever felt that conviction from the Holy Spirit before? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, do we, how, how do we respond to it? Sometimes maybe it's, I don't know, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe I, I really want, I really like doing this. Book. And God said, but you can't do that. But we're wrestling with God. Well, if we just be obedient to God, said, I'm going to give this up to you, Father God. I need you in my life. If we just have a responsive heart to what the Holy Spirit is telling, it convicts us what we do with that conviction. Is, but we just need to allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in, his, in our lives that we need. There's, he wants to do so much. He still has so much to do in each and every one of our lives if we would just allow him to do it. Second Chronicles 34, 27. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God, when you heard his words against his place and against its inhabitants, and, and you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your clothes and wept before me, I have also heard you, says the Lord. This is where they go back and they find the book of the law of Moses. And they say, oh, wait a minute. We're not doing this right. It's like their Bible. And they say, they turn their hearts back to God. And they said, we need to do the right thing. And they humble their hearts before God. Said, we're going to do what right in God's sight and what he wants us to do. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged source, piercing even the division of souls and spirit and of joints and marrows and discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's funny because Mary was talking about how we always say to the children, learning Bible scriptures. And we, and we say that so much as in children's church. We're always telling them, this is your sword. This is what we need to fight the devil with. Amen. We need to know the word. We need to memorize scripture. And that's why we can't tell the kids so much. Everywhere you go, we should bring in this with us. Because you never, never know when someone's going to ask you a question. I did that a few times at work. I had my Bible, Rachel, what does this say? It's like, hold on. So I'm trying to find it. And I was able to tell them. But, and when you go to battle, what if a soldier goes to battle without his sword? What's going to happen? He's going to get killed. We need to have our sword with us every single day so we can fight the enemy because he's attacking us every day. And we just need to be able to fight him with a whole heart. And we can speak scripture to him and he will flee from us. We just claim the name of Jesus and he's just going to flee from us because it's sharper than any two-edged sword, the word of God. So make sure you don't even leave home without it. Which I'm even talking to myself. <laughs> Wherever we go, we should always have it. Because you never know. Someone is going to have questions for us. And I'd rather just say, instead of saying, okay, can you wait a few days? I'd rather say, well, let's look it up. So make sure you bring this everywhere you go. Amen. So do you have a responsive heart for Jesus? Psalms 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My strength means my rock. My redeemer describes God as the one who purchased our freedom from any bondage or slavery. He purchased that price for us. We had no hope until Jesus paid that price for us. Now, the second thing that Jesus' heart of women needs is an undivided heart. Amen. <laughs> wow. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me a way, O Lord, I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. An undivided heart. Do you have an undivided heart for God? That means giving up everything in this world. You're going to follow after Christ no matter what. You don't want to return to whatever you gave up. When you leave things at the altar, leave it. Don't pick it up. God wants to have an undivided heart for him. No other gods. Maybe there's things in your life that you have. TV is one of my biggest things. I need to give that up. Because when I go home from church, service, good service, what is the first thing I do is put on the TV. And there's nothing good on TV anymore. Right. You can't find nothing good. 
<coughs> it fills your mind with junk. We need an undivided heart. God, no other God. Maybe you have a computer that you watch things on that computer. Porn is the biggest thing. That filters your mind, and we don't need that. If that's you, you need to get rid of that computer. If you have to do like um, fireproof, where he smashed his computer with a baseball bat, if that's what you have to do. If you can't do it, ask the pastor, ask the ministry. I'm sure they will do it for you. But God wants an undivided heart. He doesn't want nothing to come between him, us and him. He wants an undivided heart. Psalms 119, 10, with my heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Let us not wander from God. Let us get a firm, a firm ground to stand on and take a stand for God and follow his commandments, the ten commandments he gives us. I had one people, I had a guy at work one time say, well, I don't, I don't break the ten commandments. Uh, so, of course, I had my Bible that day. Preacher, can you tell him? So I went down the list. He goes, he kept going, oh, is that what that says? I didn't know that. Oh, well, and as I kept reading, he goes, oh, wow. I guess maybe I do read to check it. He thought he would, you know, okay. But he was wrong. Joshua 22, 5. But take careful to do the commandments and the law which Moses, servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk, all, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. So we need to love the Lord. We need to love the Lord God, and we need to walk in his ways. Follow his ways. It's not always easy, but just keep your eyes on the straight and narrow path. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just look straight at him. Don't look behind you. Just we have to put blinders on. You say, okay. I'm looking at you, Lord. I'm coming for you, Lord God. That is my goal. It's to make heaven my home and to serve you with everything I've got. And the third thing a Jesus-hearted woman needs, she needs a trust in heart. His trust in heart believes that God is working all things for his purpose and our God. It is a heart full of joy and peace. It is hard to trust someone when you talk, if you go to someone and you find out that they told someone else and told someone else, and then it's hard to trust someone again, isn't it? It takes a long time. When me and my husband were having problems, I used to go through his phone at one point, and I didn't like that feeling not trusted him anymore. And finally, the last straw was I said, Lord, I need you. Amen. I decided I want that undivided heart. God, I give you everything. I'm going to trust you. And after a while, I didn't even look at my husband's phone anymore. I said, you know what, God? You kept our marriage together. We're still together. And this, this year will be 25 years Amen. of marriage for him and I. It's only through the grace of God. But I have a trust in him now. And it takes a while to earn that trust when someone does, you know, you, they hurt you. But after a while, you can start trusting that person again. Psalm 28 said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. With my song, I will praise him. Has God given you a song? We can just praise him in that song. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, whatever to do, as Mary said one, in a class one time, sing a song. It just, when you sing the praises of Jesus, it just soothes you. And it calms Sometimes I have to do that in the car. If you're going through a different thing, I crank up music, especially to some, I, my CD, some it's good song. I crank it up. And, and by the time I get to work, I'm feeling so much better. So we need to sing praises unto God. Psalm 18.2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom will I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So he is our rock. Amen. He is our fortress. 
He is our deliverer. So matter, no matter what you're going through, God can deliver you. Hallelujah. If you just give it all to him, Amen. bring it to this altar and just leave it Amen. and let him take full control of your life. Psalms 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Sometimes when we go, sometimes when we're going through a big problems, well, what do I do? And if you're not on the Lord, some people, and I used to be this way, I'll admit, is alcohol. We go to alcohol. But if we just go to God, no matter how big or how small, God will take care of it. Amen. Or when you have an important decision to make, if we just trust God, God knows what's best for us. He is a better judge on what we want than we are. <laughs> he is so much a better judge than what we want. We must trust him completely in every choice we make. We must, we must, excuse me, we must not be wise in our own eyes, but be willing to listen to and be corrected by God's word and wise counselor. Use your Bible as your guide and then follow God's leading. So, do you have a, sorry, I have to go back to my notes. A responsive heart? Do you have an undivided heart? Mm -hmm. And do you have a trust in heart? Mm -hmm. In conclusion, a responsive heart is obedient to the gentle nudging of the Holy Spirit and allows His words to judge our thoughts. Undiv an undivided heart seeks Him wholeheartedly and lives with an integrity and fruitfulness. A trusting heart rests confidently in the arms of the one they know. And like Jeremiah 24, 7, then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Amen. So do you have a trusting heart? Do you have an undivided heart? If not, there's going to be an opportunity later on for you to have that faith and trust in God and have an undivided heart for God. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but rather to those who sell, go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But, the, but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to 
the bridegroom is coming. Go and meet him. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go and meet him. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go and meet him. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go and meet him. Well done, my good and faithful servants. For I am the bridegroom, and you are the brides. I have clothed you in white. Those who are foolish will not see the kingdom of heaven. Those who are not prepared will not enter the joy of our Lord. Please, Crystal would like to have us exhort you with this little play to be prepared, to make sure that your lamps are trimmed and your oil is ready. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to just have an altar call. This is serious business because if we don't know the bridegroom, we're not getting in. We need to know that we know that we're getting in. You need to know that when the bridegroom says, here I am, let's not be the ones that we're knocking at the door and our master say, I never knew you. Surely, I don't know you. I never knew you. You see, we can do some good works. I have a Catholic upbringing, so I have to be careful that I'm not that Martha, Martha, you are concerned to worry about much, but Mary has chosen the most precious thing. So just take time, and I'm asking myself too, Lord, I want to be ready. I want to be among the wise. I don't want to be among the foolish. So if there's any doubt, this is the time to make it right. This is the time to come and make it right. To know that you know that you know that if Jesus, the bridegroom, were to come, if the crier were to say, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, 
Go after him. That you won't have to go and find the Holy Spirit. The oil represents the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what lives within, it, within us. If you have the Holy Spirit, you won't have to go out searching. You will know that you know that you're where God wants you to be. So I bid you come. If you have any doubt, any doubt, whether you'll be ready. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for watching today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street in Rumford, Maine. I pray that this sermon has informed you as well as drawn you closer to a wonderful relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to take this time to invite you to our Sunday services, Sunday school for all ages at 9 a.m., worship at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., and we have something brand new, a men and women's study groups on Sundays at 5 p.m. Also, on Wednesday nights, we have Family Night Ministry for All Ages at 6.30, as well as the churches open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 until noon with church office hours, as well as classes on Tuesday and Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then we, our food pantry is open on Thursdays from 9 until noon. Take care, and may God richly bless you, and feel free to check us out on Facebook at Praise Assembly of God. God bless you.